we got one of the craziest, dopest producers, oh, and the smartest okay. producers too, because you drop oh, crazy okay. knowledge for real. Yeah, I just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I don't even produce, and I'm like, yeah. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if I were to produce, I'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but we got a uh, L mine in the building. What up? Say hey, please, man. What up? Thank you guys for having me, man. Oh, hey, it's nice. So this is my third time at A3C, man. The first time I came out here, I, I think it was, um, man, I think it was like. I want to say like four years ago. Okay. It was a long time ago. Yeah. I think it might have been like the first one. Okay. Um, and I just, I, it's just really, really cool to see how much it's grown. Yeah. Over the years. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, and then the next time I was out here was last year. Okay. And that shit was crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, like part of me was like kind of thrown off because this year was like, oh man, we're not doing that. That fucking what was it masquerade. called? Masquerade. Masquerade. We're not doing that masquerade anymore. Yeah. I'm like fuck. I'm like, man, how's this gonna go? But like, so far, it's been pretty nuts. Yeah, yeah that, that you know? first day, a lot of people, it was a hassle for people like the first day. Yeah. Like, oh, now I gotta drive here, do this, do that. Yeah. But then by the second day, I'm like, it is what it is, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah people got used to it. And also, too, man, like, now kind of looking back at how the weekend has been um, this year, it's like, it's kind of a good thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now there's more things that can happen. Exactly, yeah. Not Everybody's just not just jammed up in one place and things. And people try to get out of ill mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure there's like a line of people. Oh, you know man, what I'm yeah. saying? You no. can't move two feet without somebody hitting you up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like, dude, so no. the bathroom. Come right, on, let me right. go. Also, too, what I noticed about uh, when A3C was at Masquerade was people would go to a stage, right? Yeah. And then because everything was in one place, yeah. it was easy to just leave and oh, check okay. something else because yeah. there was things going on at the same time. So yeah. you, as a performer, you know, you would have just constant yeah, traffic. Yeah. It's like, yo, like, where y'all going? Exactly, yeah. Oh no, you know, we're going upstairs real quick. Yeah. And then we're going to come back. You know, so it now it's on. like if you hit up a spot, yeah. like you're pretty much there. Yeah, the whole time. And you know I think what I mean? It's, it also shows the beauty of how diverse hip hop is right now because you had a lot of things to choose from, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, for, for every kind of different taste, you know, which is evident from, you know, the. Uh, from the program yeah. they've been giving us. So you can pick and choose what you want. It just shows that you know, there's a lot going right. on in yeah. hip hop right now. It's a great thing. Yeah, shout to, um, you know, shout to uh, Jay Hatch and shout to uh, yeah, School right. of Audio Engineering. Oh, yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. The whole technical aspect of A3C is the one, is that's the part that I've been involved with the most so yeah. far. Um, and, uh, and, and it's just really, really amazing to see how many people are, are into that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like last year, at Masquerade, you know, we had the Guitar Center stage, yeah. and there was like a technology room, so it was like booths with like native instruments, yeah. and Avid, and Pro Tools, and all these companies. But now it was just like the entire School of Audio Engineering, yeah. two oh, floors yeah. with a huge fucking theater, That's dope. you know, um, and it was like somewhere around 800, uh, yeah. registrants that wow. came through yeah. just to the technical yeah. side of things. And it's funny not. you said that because we were talking to Evil D earlier. He was like, I'm a nerd. I'm like, man, we're all <coughs> nerds. I mean, we're nerds, all nerds. nerds pretty yeah. much make, I mean, you know, the rap, the rappers and the DJs, they make it look cool, but nerds are what make it go. Yeah. Put it this way. Yeah. Yo, it's so funny you guys said that because I do my own radio show yep. every Friday called Black on the Radio. Yeah, and that is and it's a, Thank you so much, yeah. man. It's a two-hour producer talk everything radio yeah. show. And we did a live broadcast, or recorded broadcast yesterday okay. at School of Audio Engineering, which we're gonna broadcast this Friday. And um, and we we're talking about how we're all just fucking grown ass nerds. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I, I was making a point where I was like, um, you know, if you're a producer, like it's funny when I see like producers yeah. walking around, like let's say they get like a couple placements and like yeah. <laughs> they big chain and shit, yeah. and they're walking around like, you know, I uh, yeah, like cool guy shit. You yeah, know exactly. What I mean? yeah. I'm the man. And I'm like, I'm like in my head, I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> play Final Fantasy VII in high school. Man. Exactly. <laughs> Cut that shit out. You know what I'm saying? You were getting pushed in the lockers. You, you, were, you were getting pushed in the lockers. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Still, man, don't give me that shit. You know exactly, what I mean? So yeah. like, I, I feel like 99 percent of producers, you know, even if you do make it, like, you know, there there was some type of thing that motivated you or inspired you to, to take that route. And, exactly. And, I mean, and nine times out of ten, you were fucking nerd. Yeah, I mean, the whole time you're basically looking at some piece of technology. Yeah, you know it's, it's not like you're looking at the street writing rhymes or something. Yeah, you're no. looking at a computer screen or an NPC pad or something. Yeah, you know like if you were really like swagged out, cool guy, like it wasn't <laughs> like, yeah, man, I'm about to get bitches going to strip club, man, I'm about to top this. 
this EPS 16 and, <laughs> and take some piano lessons. You know, let's just go get me bad. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, yeah, just, no yeah. man. You're doing it because you're a fucking nerd. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. So, it's the, you know, and, so. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. Those are stuff. Talk a little bit about um how you how you got on as far as got your foot in the door. Uh, Eldest Sensei's record and was because you're originally from uh, I'm from Jersey, right? yeah. Right. I'm from a little a small town called Bloomfield, New Jersey, yeah. where they actually where they filmed the final scene of The Sopranos. Oh, okay, where yeah, Holstein. So I used to go, I got homies that like used to work there, yeah, in high school. That's dope, yeah. all right. Um, so yeah, no, so I started, um, I guess my first my start was was around, it that record then? No, well, I'll, I'll tell you, so um. Around 1999, 2000, I, I um I started logging on to this website called UndergroundHipHop.com. Yeah, and that was it, like with the black background, like it was yeah. mad simple. Yeah, like, right? it was yeah. like kind of yeah, it was yeah. like you know like semi dial up. Yeah, on some Geo Cities. Type yeah, Geo yeah. Cities kind of, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, it was UndergroundHipHop.com, and there was a producer forum. Yeah, right. And I remember how I found it. I just like went on a search engine. It wasn't Google back then. It was, uh, it was some early. Alpha Vista. Type yeah, of one of those. Ones, yeah. yeah. Um, so so I, I I searched the site and I saw they had a producer forum, and I used to I used to go to that that forum all the time and post up my beats. You know what I mean? Yeah. And back then it was like dial up shit. So like, really? yeah. So 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 yeah. It would take forever, but like. That was a concept that was completely new. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're talking about 99, 2000. Yeah. Like, that, you weren't, it wasn't normal to upload music yeah. yet as a producer. Yeah. So, like, we had this forum of us, of a bunch of us, and this is, like, global. Like, we're talking yeah. about, like, producers from Germany and uh, Australia, everything. And uh, we're uploading our, our, our beats to, to the internet yeah. and, like, sharing the shit and giving each other feedback. Yeah. Like, yo, this kid's dope. Like, yo, who's this kid? Don't mind. Like, that beat he posted last week was kind of nuts. Like, yeah. gonna get at him. So, like, that was sort of my first experience. And, and I would even say, debatably, some of the first kind of um, experiences and interactions going on um, on the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? This was the birth of, of yo, we met on the internet. Like, yeah. this was before MySpace. MySpace oh, didn't yeah. exist yet. This yeah. was fucking... Forum, you yeah, know what I mean. Everything was all forum. Yeah, yeah, everything was forum. So, um, that's that's how I got my start. Like, I kind of built up a, a, right. a fan base on that website yeah. enough to where I met I met one of one of my one of my homies, close homies now. Uh, his name is Slop Funk Dust. Yeah, yeah, Tampa. Yeah, yeah, Tampa. Yeah. 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 So I met Slop through UndergroundHipHop.com in like '99. He was yeah. like one of the first cats that reached Beef out. Beefing acts, beefing acts yeah, all day. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so then he introduced me to Acrobatic. Oh, yeah, and okay. Acrobatic at the time was signed to Detonator, I believe. Yeah. Or yeah. he had a deal with Coup d'Etat um, Records. I think I'm Detonator. Yeah, Detonator. Coup d'Etat. And then, um, and then um, he was like, yo, you know, I want to send this beat off to, to Acrobatic. And honestly, like, I like that was kind of around the time when it was like sending beats was a new concept too. Yeah. It was like, yo, email me that track. So I was like, Oh, yeah, I could just email him the MP3. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like so, I emailed it to him, and then and then and then through Slop, you know, act, um, I found out that Acrobatic wanted to use it as a single, That's and dope. the name of the song was called "Remind My Soul." Yeah, oh, yeah. You did that joint. That's yeah. Amazing. And then uh, so that was my first like official placement. It was, it was, it was a great uh, placement, by the way. That was, that was the, the dope female aspect. vocal. That's for the chorus of that was crazy. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was um. It was a chop. It was a, a white rabbit. Um, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, you don't have to say how it. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it was say. <laughs> no but, but, uh, now, what were you using then? Like, you know, the UGHH internet form. What were you making beats on at that point? Wow. Okay. So um, I had an SP twelve hundred. Oh well, damn. Okay. I had a. Uh, I had a. I had a. Um, at that time. Yeah. Uh, I had a. I had a. An old PC. With Cubase oh, and an Akai okay. S20. Okay. Because I couldn't afford an MP. Yeah. So I got a I got an S20 on eBay yeah. for like a, a buck fifty. All right. Uh, with what little money I had, and um, and I kind of like that was like kind of like my first real setup. Yeah. Um, but when I was younger, when I was like thirteen, um, uh, my dad had a key a rolling keyboard. Okay. Uh, called a KR. It was a KR forty five hundred keyboard, yeah. and back then it was, it was like, like huge, right? It was huge. Yeah. It was a stage. 
keyboard. Yeah. It was like seven G's back then. Yeah. But like it had MIDI and you can like compose music on it. Yeah. Um, you know, with like fucking shitty sound. <laughs> but um, I, that was my first experience actually like making beats was like messing around with that thing. I was, I was, when I was younger, it was about music or video games. Mm. I was a huge fucking video game. Yeah. Like I had every system. Uh -huh. Name system I had. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So you went from working with Acrobatic, then it was the Elder Sensei record, <coughs> Fat Beats. Yeah. So, uh, so actually, yeah. Let me continue. So we did the, I did the placement Acrobatic, and then, um, and then fast forward about a year later, uh, I got hit up um, by by these guys, um, by this cat Sal, who used to work for a, a record company called Soul Spasm. Yo, yo and Soul, Soul Spasm yeah. started a live producer showcase called Beat Society. Yep. Yeah, um, this was like 2001. So um, this was before any beat battle existed. Yeah, this was yeah. Before any producer showcase existed. So he hit me up and he was like, "Yo, man, um, you, I really, you know, fuck with you. I like what you do, man. Um, are you willing to come out to Philly to do this producer showcase called Beat Society, where you just bring your keyboard or your MP or whatever, yeah. and you load up beats and you play beats for the crowd?" I was like, "Yeah, bet. I'm yeah. down for sure." So um, and this was like fresh off of the acrobatic shit. Like, yeah. it was just like, I'm damn near unknown person, yeah. you know what I mean? So I go out there, and I find out that um, the lineup is me, um, Kanye West, Holy crap. Um, 88 Keys, and uh, DJ uh, uh, J-Ski. Okay. Um, so, so I go there, and long story short, I do the event, and this was before Kanye was... Kanye. Kanye, <laughs> yeah. but this was after Blueprint. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So y'all use that. Yeah. Name this was moment. after Blueprint, so yeah. it was like, all right, Kanye is a big deal. Yeah. But this was before college dropout. Yeah. Like this, this guy to come up. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, long story short, it was an incredible night. You know what I mean? Like really just changed my life, yeah. and just kind of reminded me like, yo, like maybe this is like something I should, should be do, doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So that was like a big thing for me to keep continuing. So then after that. I just kept building, kept going to Philly. Like I used to drive to Philly like three, four times a week. Damn. And it's just in the far drive. It's not far. It's yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah. You know what I mean? I used to just network, and then I met Hez, and then I just kept building yeah, so the Beat Society guy. guys. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Hez. Um, and then I met little. Eventually met Ninth and little brother, mm -hmm. and those guys. Um, you know, on, on another forum, OKPlayer.com. Yeah. Um, and then I met, and then I knew Nicolay for a while. So like this was, and this is all I met. The little brother uh, before the listening came out, like we were okay. cool way, way, way before all that shit. Because um, you guys kind of got in that, because like, it almost seemed like in the wild, wild west of the internet when it was first starting, like, with hip hop being on there. Yeah, a lot of people that were kind of got in there early are still all cool together, and you guys are really popping off now, and you're still cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like the we first were there in hip hop on. club. You yeah, know I remember when when Nicolay hit me on on AOL mail. It was like ill mind something at AOL.com. <laughs> And he I still hit got me. my AOL yeah. account too. Yeah, I wish I had my. I still had mad like messages on there. So Nicolay hit me. He was like, "Yo, ill, like you got any advice? Like I'm about to, you know, do this venture. Uh, like he had asked me about something. Yeah. And uh, just seeing like how how far he's gone. Yeah. Now just uh, legendary he's fucking like making you like with yeah. Like, Orchestras and yeah. all type of crazy. So yeah. we all came up together, man. Like Rook was another early underground hip hop.com user from uh, Justice League. Justice League, yeah. So, just them. Um, I think they were in Tampa too. I think. Yeah, they're in Tampa. I think they're in Atlanta now. Yep. Yeah. So I knew Rook for a long time. M Phases, you know, Jake One, Khalil, you know, um, all of us kind of like came up together. Ninth yeah. Crisis, um, you know, list goes on. So basically, long story short, I was grinding, 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 um, and you know. Obviously, I was just like this kid living in my mom's basement, yeah. banging on my ASR 10, yeah. you know, and, and for, I did that for six years, just like networking, cool, riding, yeah. making fucking five beats a day for yeah. six summers. See, you know and that, that's, uh, people need to understand that, because black people don't even know that you were grinding six years, you know what I'm saying? Six years before I, I, can, I would safely say that I made enough money yeah. to call it an actual career i guess so yeah. fast forward you know 2006 i got a message uh on myspace yeah. from uh from one of my good friends d prosper who used to be an a and r at g unit okay and him and shot money that was when they were running, when shot was still president yeah and um and he was like yo i'm looking i heard some shit 
that you did with you know, Little Brother and all these guys. Yeah. And, th- and that was around the time I was fucking with, with Duck Down already. Okay, yeah. So Drew, Drew mm-hmm. and Noah, I've known them for years, and D, all those guys. And um, so he's like, yo, really like what you do, working on 50, working on this, working on that. So I sent him like 30 of my hottest joints. Yeah. And then a couple of days later, he hit me back. He's like, yo, man, Shot Money wants to meet with you. Oh. We really want to fuck with you, you know, you're dope. So I went up to the studio on a rooftop and I uh, met up with, with D and Shaw. And, um, and and I remember the first thing Shaw had said to me, he was like, yo, man, he was like, yo, what you smoking, man? <laughs> like the Filipino fire. He was like, he was like the Filipino fire. And I'm just like, yo, that's what's up, Yeah, man. shit. So, no. um, so from there on, it just kind of blew from there, and I got my. Ill mind makes the worst <laughs> piece in the world. <laughs> hey, you want to come uh, in? You can come in. Uh, I, I come quit. In. I quit. Let's, let's get this hater's <laughs> face on there. Oh, watch out for the camera. I see it. I see it. Legend is here. Cream. Ilman is do I just they just asked me some of my favorite producers. Ilman is definitely one of them. Oh man. Funky you, and he's a boom bap producer, so love that. Thank you so much, sir, man. Means yeah. a lot, man. Yes, sir. All right, dude. In the building. See you again. Right right Remember, you know. Khalil, so I need your any. Oh, yeah, for sure. Me up. I got you with the car. Good looking out. All right, man. See you later, man. It's really cute. Man. So, yes, yeah, so now. Oh, what's up, man? All right, good, good. You've been doing your thing for a minute. All right, see, keep it up. It's okay. stuff like that, you know. What I mean? Yeah, I mean, how does so, that make so you wait, feel, though? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I mean, you know, I, I I've known Cream for for a while now, yeah. and like every time I I see him and run into him, it's always the same thing. Yeah, cause, I mean, because Cream wasn't like one of the first internet group dudes, which you know what I'm saying, with Ninth and Nickelay and all that stuff. He was doing it way before. That, way before. You know what I'm saying? Way before. How does that make you feel that? It's, it's amazing like, every time. Like, yeah. You know, that just made my weekend. You know? <laughs> and then when he told me that yesterday, it made my weekend yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's dope. But, uh, but yeah, no, Prem, Prem, Prem is a big homie, man. And, like, you know, um, it's when you go back and look at it, it's like, yo, like, I, I did put the work in. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, six years of a lot of shit. Like, like, I, I, like if I went really went into it and got deep, and really told you guys like what I had to go through yeah. to really get there. Like it's it's a lot, you yeah. know what I mean? And like it takes time. And I think nowadays with producers, they a lot of them don't understand that this shit takes time. Yeah. It takes time to, 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 to become good at what you do, yeah. first and foremost. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it takes time to to get in the door and get them to know the right people. Yeah. Build your skill set, build your human interaction skills. Yeah. Build, all these things need building. It's like the NBA. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Like if you're, if you're, and then as soon as you get in the building, that's when it's the real, real time. work. Happens. Real work yeah. happens. So it's like you got to go through this whole process to even get in the door. Yeah. And um, then watch people like, even look at you when you get in the door. Yeah, man. Like it's like, like um, it's like it's like the NBA. Like if you're a bench player, yeah. that doesn't mean you suck. Yeah. You're one of the great. You're one of the best fucking players in the world. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. Like, like if you if you try to play, if you go one on one with a bench player, they'll fucking kill you. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. But then you're on that bench. You're now it's time to show and prove. Exactly. So yeah. it's a whole nother like process and grind from there as well. Yeah. You know. So now of course you know coming from him it would mean a lot. You know he came in here for a brief second and said, "Oh man, I love Ilma because he still does boom bap." Like as a producer, like do you? Do you like that title? You know, when people say, I need some boom bap on my album. I don't mind it. Boom bap to me just means it, like raw. It raw. Yeah. Yeah. Boom bap yeah. is raw. Boom bap to me isn't like, oh, it's from the, the years of 1994 <laughs> and 1997. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything after that is not, not <laughs> yeah. fuck you, man. Exactly. Yo, the shit just, it's the, the, that not. You know what I mean? That's what, how I see it. Yeah. Um, like I would consider, um, like a lot of the stuff on let's like Good, Good Kid, Mad City, yeah, okay. Ken, Ken, Kendrick's album. Like yeah. a lot of that is boom bap to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it makes you go like this exactly. and it's spitting. Yeah. That's that 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 rawness. I think it's the rawness for me. So you think that's? I mean, it's always been here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now, do you think, as far as like maybe the mainstream commercial side, like that entity is kind of looking back and be like. All right, well, you know what I'm saying? We need to push this more or something, you know what I'm saying? With the success of Good Kid Mad City. Yeah, I think I think music is shifting um, to a, a good direction, mm-hmm. you know? like, But again, there's always going to be a balance, yeah. you know? Like, you're always going to have, like, the guys over here doing what we consider is shitty, and yeah. then 
this guys over here doing what we consider as classic awesome hip hop, yeah. and then there's the in between stuff. I think there's always just going to be a balance. It's, when there isn't a balance, I think we're in trouble. Yeah. Like I don't want everything to be boom bap. Yeah, I don't want exactly. everything to be ratchet club. Yeah. I don't want everything to be pop. Like yeah. we need it all, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we're I humans. Think, we all have. Yeah, man. Inside, you know. Yeah. And fortunately for me, and and I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but like I enjoy a lot of stuff. Mm. You know, I listen to everything. Like yeah. I. I produ- a lot of people don't know, but I produce pop music as well. Right. You know, okay. I, I'm in a pop band. People oh, right. know that. Yeah. Okay. What's name, real quick? Smokey Robotic. Smokey Robotic. Yeah, I was in. Um, yeah. I was in. I was uh, in L. A. Uh, I flew directly from L. A. to yeah. here. Okay. We have, uh, I had a meeting out there. Uh, I got flown out regarding that. Yeah. And it's just pop shit. Nice. It's like meetings with like Illuminati people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like cut your hand and yeah. bleed yeah. real quick. It's yeah. like Illuminati. I had an Illuminati meeting. That's what I got. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I can't say his name, but uh, but yeah, it's like I because I enjoy that world too. Yeah, so I'm like, I mean, you yeah. enjoy mu- you're a producer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you you enjoy music. You want to produce music, dude. There's That's no it. limits, man. Like yeah. I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah. Like if I love pop music, I'm gonna fucking go get it. Yeah, exactly. All right, right. let's. As long as it's in your like, as long as it's what you want to do, you know what I'm saying. You're not forced yeah. to do it. Yeah, no, not at all. Like I'll do an EP with Sean Price tomorrow. Yeah, and then like whatever, I'll go to LA and fucking work with some top line pop writers yeah. and, and pitch some shit to Katy Perry. Yeah. Awesome. As long as it's like Fuck a, it. How did you land the production on, on Cruel Summer? Uh, that was through my man, um, Rye Fest, who's oh, a good friend of mine. Fest, yeah. and, uh, and, through my man, everybody, and through my man, Shea Pope, okay. who is uh, the director of A&R at Good Music. And, um, and, and those two, man, they, they just uh, believed in me for a very long time, yeah. especially Rye Fest. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just made it happen. And uh, you know, all the guys that were in that room, like uh, Am, the homie Ad Liva was in there, right. and Pusha and, 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 and all these guys. And, you know, they they all are big supporters of mine too. So yeah. it was like, it was just a no brainer. I mean, you have that track record because you've been putting in work, you know what I'm saying? Right. Consistently just, they see that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you can't really, like as a producer, like a lot of, th- the one thing that I think a lot of producers need to get used to is like, you, can't, you have to live in the moment. Yeah. You can't like expect Mm-hmm. certain things to happen like I don't know when my next check is mm-hmm. I don't yeah. um, I don't know where I'll be a year from now I'm sure you got some saved up though I'm saying yeah I, yeah. I have a couple, yeah, 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 couple <laughs> but, yeah. but but like you know I don't know when I don't get a check on the first and the 15th mm-hmm. you know I mean yeah publishing checks and ask if that's different but like that's like every six months though. yeah you know yeah. what I mean um so like I don't know what my next move is well, I do but like I don't know when my next check is so yeah. like that's all dependent on the work that I put in, right. you know? So like being a producer is very, very much an entrepreneurial position because yeah. I can have the best managers in the world, the best lawyer, and I have an incredible lawyer, yeah. incredible manager. But but if the if, if I'm not putting the work in and I'm not grinding myself, then Definitely. I'm only gonna get, get as far, go as far, you yeah. know? So it's all the, it's all on me. The yeah. pressure is on me. I'm my own worst enemy, yeah. you know? Now, talk, talk, about, oh, talk about a little bit about Okay, you released on SoundCloud some joints for Kanye's album. Right. Um, are those ever going to see the day of light as far as being out on retail? Or where? I mean, uh, uh, what's the? Um, just that talk is, about uh, well, uh, talk about the formation of those beats and, and, and what they were for. So, so they're never going to see the light of day on retail. Oh yeah, just got too many views. Yeah. So like, I don't see any artist in their right mind that would want to pay for that again, yeah. or at all. But. Um, Basically, that was material that I had created um, post Cruel Summer, um, after we did the morning. So like, after we did the morning, I was kind of in, I was like pretty much, creatively, I was in like 90% Kanye mode, okay. in my head. Yeah. And creatively, and it, it, it's like, I when I create, I like to create what I'm inspired to create at that moment. Okay. So like, but it was a string of like, two, three months where I was just like Kanye mode. Yeah. Um, and then knowing, uh, catching wind and knowing that he was, you know, working on album material and all this other stuff. Um, you know, I was just in that mode. So like between the months of, I would say August of 2012 um, to like January of this year, okay. um, I was just working on man material. Mm-hmm. So that was just a, collection of stuff out of a lot oh, of shit yeah. that I did and shout to everyone who I collaborated with like front runners amazing top line singers um the homie symbolic one you know yeah, power and, and all this stuff um 
uh, and um, yeah, man, it was just it was just material that I made, and I felt so good really, about really, it. Really just, good, I didn't want to. Really yeah, I didn't want it to sit on a hard drive. Yeah. I mean, if I never put that out, it would just be it would just be a, a, a placement chasing game. Yeah. And I'm not playing that game. Like like this is good music, no pun intended. That that I feel like people people should hear, you yeah. know. And I really wanted to share that with the world. So I was just like, man, let me get my homie to do artwork, and let's just put it out for free and just let it let it live. So, Sounds dope. Yeah. Now, uh, real quick, talk about uh, Black Radio. You know what I'm saying that you got. It's not even just. I just say say black because there's many okay. things to black. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. Black yeah. kids, black yeah. radio, yeah. black dishwashing. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so we'll, the showcase basically um, is it's. Uh, it's called Blap, and it stands for uh, Beats Love Alcohol Party. Nice. And uh, it's an idea I had, which is pretty much, to me, you know, it, it's 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 an honor of Beat Society. Yeah. It really is like the same format. You know, you have producers and they showcase beats yeah. in, a, in a in a in a you know in like a continuous fashion. And it's like a, a beat cipher, basically, is what yeah. it is. Um, so my idea was, you know, let's do it in a way where we have like four or five unknown completely unknown up and coming producers who are dope yeah and then like one or two established producers who are also dope yeah and then and then have them come together and share the stage evenly together yeah. you know as 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 um, like a producer community yeah as a community yeah you know so you can have fucking grammys and all this shit but like be sitting right next to a kid who has no placements, yeah. you know, doing shit in their mom's basement. But still basement. dope. But yeah. still sharing the equal love and, yeah. and, 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 and knowing that, yo, yeah, I, I can attain that. Yeah. You know, I could, this guy who has multiple Grammys, like, I'm as dope as him. Yeah. Motivation. You know, so yeah. it's, it's a lot of, part, part of it is, is to inspire the producer community and then uh, inspire all of us and also, too, to just create excitement and also, too, just something fun to do every yeah. month. So I do it. I do it monthly. I stopped the monthly thing yeah. for now, but we're gonna kick it off in January. Oh, but um, we do it every month, and you know, we built up a community, and and it's 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 allowed for people to network together. Like yeah. I've seen producer crews form through the so, show that yeah. they met at the show, and they're like, "Yo, let's collaborate." And now they're like a production duo. You know what I mean? So it's like that's why I do it, man. Like we as producers, we don't have too many. Outlets, yeah, to be able to do shit like that. Yeah, that's why at A3C, you know, at Hatch and I Standard, like when when this shit goes down, like cats are excited because yeah. if they're not here, they're for the rest of the year until next year, they're at the crib, yeah, just making beats. Yeah. Are, you know? are you got you got joints on a new 50 album, right? Is that what it is? Hopefully, yeah. yeah. I mean, I got I have I have a lot of joints on a lot of albums. That are, that are pending right now. Yeah, you right, know what right. I mean, and that's just the way the game yeah. goes. You know, that's another whole other conversation. Yeah. You know, but what's you, dope is that you're not. <clears throat> what's cool is you, you're not waiting for that to happen. No, so you have like black. Not. You know what I'm saying? So you created black yeah. to keep yourself, I guess, like busy and keep it out there. You know I mean, I do it because I love it. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I don't, I don't really do things to like because I feel like I have to. Mm -hmm. Like, unfortunately. I'm at the point in my career where, where I pursue things that I just want to do. Yeah. Like radio show every Friday. Let's fucking do it every Friday because it's awesome to do. Yeah. Like forget the club Friday night. Yeah. No one goes out Friday night. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. Losers club. Or <laughs> <Friday night. laughs> like for producers too. You know what I'm saying? That's why like that's the start of their weekend where they're going to try and make as many as yeah. they can before they go back to work Monday. Hell yeah. You know dog. Hell yeah. So like let's do that shit every Friday for yeah. two hours with some of my favorite people like Stoney yeah. from... Uh, from from Native Instruments, you know my man Sean and Quest and yeah. P, and like so that and then the showcase same deal. Like I just want something to do every month, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Get Somebody together and network. Yeah. yeah, and then like so you know, at, at the end of the day, like like what I learned is you can't sit around and wait. Yeah. You know, like if you if you sit around, like let's say you get like a potential placement with like let's say Eminem, for yeah. instance, like. It's really easy to sit there every day and just be so anxious. Like, yeah. Oh my God! I hope. I hope. Yeah. Oh, they told me he liked it. They yeah. told me he recorded to it. Like, dog. You should be just making. Let it go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's one seed you just planted. Yep. Keep planting seeds. Yep. You know what I mean? Like when you make beats, you know every beat you make is a lottery ticket. Yeah. Because every beat you make has potential to get placed and generate revenue, mm -hmm. right? So like. Keep printing lottery tickets. It's like yeah. having a fucking lottery ticket printer at home. Yeah. You're gonna hit. Yeah. Just make keep making them. You know? Exactly. 
if you if you do this part time, you get part time results. Yeah, sure. So you got you got to just go in and take that dive. Um, so that's that's one of the things, real big things that I learned. All right, so top three, because you, you're always dropping knowledge on Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Tell the folks the Twitter. It's just me it. talking shit, really. No, but I mean, <laughs> but, you, it, but if a uh, master, like, Kung Fu artist is yeah. talking shit, it's still coming from a Kung yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, yeah. you know what I mean, regardless, it may be shit to Definitely. him, but it's gospel to everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate so, uh, it. So tell everybody where they can get some of that gospel on Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, website, follow please. me on Twitter, at Illmind Producer. Uh, there's like an underscore in there. No, wait, no, there is no underscore. There is, it's a regular. Okay, item. okay, yeah. cool. At Illmind Producer, um, Instagram at Illmind Producer. Uh, you can check out my website at illmind.biz, B I Z. And for you producers who want drum kits, uh, I sell drum kits, my own personal drum drum kit collection on uh, blackkits.com. Now, talk about that. Why do you, why are you helping all these that producers for and a stuff? Years now. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so, yeah, one day I was just like, man, like, like, let me just put out a collection of drums and see if people like it. Yeah. And the reason why I did that was because when I was coming up, um, you know, my source of, of drums was drum breaks yeah, from vinyl, yeah. but then also too, like Jay Dilla snares. Okay. Like I, I would take like, uh, Welcome to Detroit yeah. by Dilla and like find all the open snares and, and jack them exactly. yeah. <laughs> and use them. And that's normal. Yeah. Like Kanye does it too. He yeah. even said, he's like, you know, I love Dilla snares. Yeah. I jack them all the time. Yeah. Pete Rock snares. Like, yeah. Like I every snare on Soul Survivor One, like yeah. I've used. Oh word. Yeah, I've okay. jacked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sampled, EQ, pitched, and yeah. layered, and like boom. So like I'm like, man, like let me see if there's like a community of people out there where if I give them like straight up ill mind snares and kicks yeah. and hi hats that I've used in my in, in my actual songs yeah. and that I use personally, and if I put that out, like will people fuck with it? You yeah. know what I mean? And, and really like what I was trying to do really is just like put myself in a position where like all right if back then when I was like Jack and Dilla's drums like yeah. if Dilla put out a drum kit no, that would be crazy. the most amazing yeah. I got I'd buy ten of them yeah you know just cause it's yeah. Dilla so like like that emotional kind of like connection there I want to see you know and give back and see if I could do that for a community of new producers as well that kind of look dope. at me like that yeah so I'm like let me give them what they want let me let me inspire them. And give them what they could use, mm -hmm. and and it worked, you know, and 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 it, and people really, really, really gravitated to it, and they liked it a lot, and the feedback was great, mm -hmm. and that's really the main reason why I do it. I don't do it for the money, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I do it because try to strengthen the community. I want to, man. I want to inspire these dudes to make dope shit. Yeah. that's all I care about. We keep hip hop going. Yeah, that's let's go, right. man. Like if your shit sucks, how can I help you? Yeah, exactly. you know, because there's enough money better. to go around. Enough placements to go around. Exactly. No one's taking your spot. Yeah. Like no, I don't believe in that shit. Yeah. You know, if you're dope, you're gonna. There's enough abundance in the world for for the world to reply to what you deserve to nice. get. Nice. You know what I mean? It may yeah. not be a Jay Z album, but it, it might be. Who yeah. Knows? Who knows? But, yeah. Exactly. But look, yeah. if you're dope, like you're gonna get your shine wherever the fuck that is. Right. You know what I mean? And if everyone's dope. Then cool, man. Music will be in a good place. Awesome, yeah, and exactly. It'll be great. Producers, yeah. You know, so why not? Fuck exactly. it, man. I'm not the. I'm not the only. I could be dope, and a million other people could be dope too. Yeah. I don't have to make be for the a only beautiful awesome world. Person. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? A lot less violence. If you want to be making music, a lot less violence. Come on, <laughs> man. That's just everything is dope. Yeah. Come on, man. No more laughy techno. <laughs> no. You know so. All right, well, so thank you very much. You know what I'm saying? Keep dropping knowledge, and we're going to keep listening. Thank you, you know guys, for your time. For making a Shout difference, to too. The dopest producers today. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Appreciate guys. Appreciate it. Shout out to DJ Premier, the worst producer. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. All, All right, right, guys. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate you. All right, y'all. I gave you a card, right? Oh, uh, yeah.